All right, this next video is eight features that could change Star Citizen ship gameplay in 2023 with proof from Space Tomato. So here we go. One year ago, your ship in Star Citizen was basic transportation from point A to point B. But within just another year, they could turn into the proper center of gameplay that they were always meant to be with some very interesting game. I think we should hold Space Tomato completely accountable. If we do not get any of this content in the next year, we cancel him. Play features being implemented. I'm gonna give you a quick look into several key changes that might change your ship from just a ship into the center of the game. And if you wanna see how it all happens in real time, you can subscribe here to get weekly updates on what's going on in Star Citizen. And make sure to stick around until the end to find out how you can win a 400i exploration vessel and oh. a copy of the game. Hell now yeah. let's see what ship related features you might see in 2023. And to be clear, everything here has already been shown working in engine. Mm. Thank you for coming to my like tomato that, talk. Right? Quantum travel changed in a big way back in 2018. Since then, the game has changed Holy quite shit. a- Okay, we might not actually get this this year. Like, based on the most recent talking about how long it's going to be before we actually get, like, the ship update, we might not actually get that in 2023. Bit ...and the quality of life has improved. Quantum travel still has some issues, but it's currently seeing a rework that started almost two years ago and is looking likely to finish up the known amount of work sometime next year. <laughs> this, of course, would be in line with the introduction of master modes, which we Ooh. first saw at CitizenCon. This would include Quantum Boost, the medium distance travel method similar in ways to Super Cruise from Elite Dangerous. The master modes update overall will have an effect on our combat speeds, travel speeds, quantum boost speeds, and possibly the speed of quantum travel itself. And this large change covers one half of the overall flight and traversal updates planned. The okay. other half would be the heat and control surfaces that we looked at a couple of weeks ago. This quantum travel rework will probably define what we know as warping or jumping in Star Citizen. It's set to include a complete visual overhaul according to the July monthly report and Yes, but the, the the difference here is that they're really trying to calm our expectations on these specific features because they have to rework every single ship before they put it in the game. They can't just do some uh, and, and not others. So it's in Squadron 42 because less ships. And I don't think we're going to get this like within six months. I don't know if like this is something that they're already really trying to chill your expectations out on and Space Tomato is like full on drinking the copium. And involve a feature facing overhaul according to October, showing the extensiveness of what we can expect. And like we still using, don't have much idea of how using past work, like working on the feature is very different than applying it to every single ship in the game. How it will differ in function, visuals or even UI. It's actually one of only two features on this list that hasn't been shown in engine. And to be clear, everything here has already been shown working in engine. <laughs> yeah, I kind of lied, sorry. But I have a feeling we will be seeing it sometime in 2023, and it will be a fairly substantial change to I quantum travel. I certainly hope so, or people We've are seen various riot. versions of the travel mode and Star Citizen videos here and there, and they all have very distinct similarities that I can only imagine are at least part of the goal of this rework coming to the game. There's no way we're taking Star Citizen cinematics and applying that to what the game actually is. No way. Come on. Come on, Tomato. You know better. The fire hazard is a feature we've been following since all they the way back in 2020. In it's gone through a lot of work in physics and visuals and the way that smoke affects the environment and how the fire itself does things like starve the room of air. Uh, another thing to kind of go against his pov here a little bit is all the stuff on the screen here uh was something that was shown in uh approximately 2015 um and it has not made it into the game yet so like taking the hey we worked on this now we must be getting it in the next year again take the expectations and push them down because it doesn't mean that because they showed you fire that fire will be coming in the next year 
it just doesn't mean that it never has all gameplay in star citizen it is meant be to true. be a game of risk reward and planning fire hazards are meant to be a big danger when you're on ships and will probably play a big part in battles as the time to kill changes to the time to disable in the meantime physical damage would be allowing for ships to experience malfunctions and well fires the gameplay surrounding this fire hazard might be similar to bailing water out and patching holes in sea of thieves in star citizen you'll need to deprive the fire of oxygen use fire extinguishers or repair electronics to keep your ship running mm -hmm. this is just one of a group of features though that aims to add a lot more value to each ship and It'll every be amazing part when it of happens. said ships and as more of these features come on like fuck me boys there is nothing more than that than multi-crew needs than that right like like just the feeling of man i need to do, like everybody's doing stuff oh shit this thing's on fire over there hey go go do that did you get it yeah we're good all right we're good all right you know like the that that's a really important thing and that's definitely something that will make multi-crew ships really feel alive and really feel feel good so if this is one of the eight features that does make it into 2023 yeah it could really change the way star citizen feels and it would be really awesome online ships will continue to become less of a tool to travel with and more of a home to maintain and live in many of these features are centered around resource management another thing that they've definitely communicated is not going to come quickly so they're already setting the expectations on resource management to be calmed down space tomato Huffing the copium. The backbone of ship features. Resource management is a bit like exploration gameplay. On its own, it's an important feature and a big part of the game. Doesn't exist. But the way you can use all of its elements in other gameplay is pretty wild. If you want to know all there is to know, I made a video about this feature last month. But the short of it is the resource network will allow us players as well as NPCs to interact with or control the gravity, power, lights, oxygen, and physical components of ships, space stations, landing zones, and ground outposts. And not only that, from the opposite side, like even if you're just fighting against NPCs is shut down certain aspects of ships, right? This feature is pretty big. We've been watching it ever since the big introduction back in October of 2020. It saw a few complications in development and took longer than anticipated. But at CitizenCon 2022, about two years later, we finally got to see the actual in-game rendition of the feature. It's nothing too exciting, but seeing the ability to use relays to cut the power off in half of a ship and dis See, like, I don't think it's exciting to be able to cut the power off in the certain part of the ship. I find it to be exciting that this is how the ship works that all these things all these aspects of the ship are interconnected and you know managing that is a, a game in and of itself is kind of a really cool feature disable its shields from the inside tickles the brain with possibilities besides that we also saw the life support system struggle to maintain oxygen levels for an overfilled room the interactions between that system and yep. fires the ability to disable and enable gravity controls and other things like temperature control Yep. Of course, with all this importance comes the ability to assign roles to players on board. Give I think this is what we're going to see in 2023 is um, probably the life support stuff and the gravity support. Giving everybody unique permissions, forming actual crews in game. I'm not sure. We're we know this has been in work since late 2020 system. and can see it finishes As up much. known work sometime next year in line with gravity controls, the fire hazard and life support. So it's possible we could see first implementations of this along with all those other things yeah, in maybe game just one or two in ships. 2023. This would likely be on the Hammerhead, Hull A, and Ares, according to the August monthly reports. Yep. But we have heard that they're trying to update many ships in the background, and it's possible that ships going back to a certain date have already been released with all of this in mind. We'll have to wait and see more in the first half of next year. Well, once they finalize things, no ship should come without it. So any ship that comes after they've kind of finalized how this stuff is going to work should come without these, this feature involved. If, if, if it does, it's just terrible by CIG to do it that way. But yeah, for, for now, what they've reported to us is those three ships are the ones that they're focused on at the moment. A small ship, a, a small ship with an interior, 
a medium ship without an interior and a large ship with an interior. The cargo refactor is actually already in testing and will likely be included in the next date of 318. This Which feature transcends ships, but it's separated into multiple renditions, as many things in Star Citizen are. This means what we're seeing now is part one of several cargo refactors and focuses mainly on their function with ships. That is, cargo will now be physically present in your ship no matter what type of cargo you use. Here's the thing, if history repeats itself, there will be no update to cargo at all after the 318 update for a significant period of time. Here was your physicalized cargo. See you guys later. It sounds like that's not going to be the case. I, I will not hold my breath on this, but it sounds like, okay, we get physicalized cargo 318, then cargo missions like 319 or whatever the next patch is called. And then, you know, so maybe this is one of those features that they like continue to build upon, but I've thought that that was going to happen with like looting and, and stuff like that. And it never really did. So yeah. Go to a kiosk and order goods. Those boxes are on your ship. Find some loot and take it home. Those boxes are on your ship. Take a courier mission with three pickups and one drop off. Those boxes are on your ship. Yep. And each of these boxes can be taken from your ship, moved to another ship, and sold for profit. The big thing is this one means plenty of sharing, now. working They're together, big, and properly transporting small. the booty from your last raid to go sell some of your loot. But it also means heightened potential for pirates. Something I talked about with one of the most prominent pirate groups in the game, Mongrel Squad, on my recent podcast. I'll leave that one in the relevant links down below for you. But this is a pretty big deal. It means everybody should have a multi-tool on them, and with that inclusion of soft death in the next patch, it means you're always in a bit more danger of that cargo attracting the wrong attention. Mm -hmm. I'll talk about soft death in a later video, but it's another big change coming to Star Citizen in 318. Now this is all by design, but it is a bit intense, and there will be a lot of discussion and balance surrounding these changes. After the current refactor to cargo, we can expect to see freight elevators and persistent hangars coming online as well to support the trading side of cargo. Yeah, and that's the two things that if they don't come in 2023, I would be incredibly disappointed. And they're, they're things that do sh change ship gameplay completely. Cargo running in ships, even though it's not directly inside of a ship, it's um they're major, major features. And I would be really disappointed if they didn't continue work towards those and and deliver them in 2023. That would be one of my like must haves for 2023. And if they don't deliver it, I would be incredibly upset. At this point, players will be tasked with either manually loading the cargo onto their ships or hiring somebody else to do so with associated loading times, hangar fees and crew costs. Remember, this is supposed to be a sim, but that development is still a ways off. It's just, you know, if you're into cargo, you better prepare yourself. Mm. Mm. Then there's Passenger always the other transport. type of cargo. Drugs. I mean, uh, people. This <laughs> is an interesting one. Similar to salvage, it has been delayed quite publicly a few times. There's not much to know about this profession other than the fact that we know one. it's being worked on and have seen it working in a closed environment, but I can't find too much recent information on the feature in particular. It was heavily dependent on the planetary navigation mesh, which was introduced last year, but we can see on the progress tracker there was plenty more work besides that to get this feature out the door, and I imagine there's even more that's not here. But this will be a pretty big addition to the game, as it rep- I imagine there's some, uh persistent entity streaming issues with it right um but man dude remember this remember seeing these things like all the reputation possibilities for all these different avenues and what it could mean represents mm. an entire career path and segment of the game being added <laughs> there are three forms of cargo gameplay in star citizen physical goods data and personnel these will all represent different career paths with the latter depending on actual comfort level of your ship Nicer ships like the 600i, Constellation Phoenix, or Spirit E1 will have less clients but charge higher prices, might do some touring trips, or just an executive delivery from one planet to another. 
On the other hand, generalized craft like the Starliner will handle crowded and cheaper fares. Of course, these clients will either be NPCs or players in the game who don't feel like flying their own ships. Yes. Though there doesn't seem to be much emphasis on that second group of ships like the Starliner just yet, though I imagine we'll see more big people movers in the future. There will be things to consider in passenger transport like the routes you take, a good crew to have, the proper actor feature services like medical and food related, and of course, the Mixmaster, an actual beverage maker for your clients. Don't ask. There's an entire yeah, document, don't. which is likely outdated, but will provide some insight into the direction of this feature. I'll leave it in my relevant links for this video as well. Regardless, this is still a pretty unknown feature. While we've seen some footage on it, we haven't heard that much about it, even though the scheduled work ended earlier this year. Because of this, I'm expecting to hear more about yeah. it soon, and hopefully we'll see it in- It sounds like they, they worked it up to where they could, and then probably PES became a priority on whatever team was working on that feature. Their 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 feature work for PES is probably uh, prioritized over nearly anything else would be in the my game guess. sooner rather than later. Repair. Hmm. Salvage and repair are kind of weird features to have on this list, but that's yes. why I wanted to focus mainly on the repair side of things. This is a feature that speaks solely to the history of our ships, which over time is going to be something people grow very proud of. As time goes on and new features come online and I'm annoying bugs stop occurring as much, our ships will last longer and longer. And things like what planets you've been on, how often you get your ship touched up. Yes, but this is a video about 2023. And do we think that the bugs are going to be less often in 2023? Maybe. The heat damage not. of your VTOL thrusters and the battle scars of your fights will all be on full display to anybody who sees your ship. Repair is a small step in that process. This is a feature everybody will see, because as your ship takes damage Ooh, and you patch okay. it up with your... This is a feature I don't think anyone will see. Um, how I see this feature is very much like refueling. There's not quite a point in doing it when you could just land on a landing pad and have it done instantly for you. And at incredibly low cost. For multi-tool, whether that be with someone else's hull, so for 2023, judging, or some material no, you've the bought future, yourself, yes. the places you repair the ship will persist. The paint won't be renewed, rather you'll have a scar where that hole in your ship used to be, as a reminder. It took a while for the supporting features like the damage maps to be ready for this, but repair should be a new ship focused option for all players to try out and maybe even make some money with when Alpha 318 goes live. People are just gonna sell RMC, that's it. They said it's gonna be worth what Quantanium's worth. The other feature on this list we haven't actually seen working in engine yet are the vehicle tractor beams. But we kinda have because handheld have. tractor beams are here and we use them all the time. Basically, you cannot talk about freight elevators or anything related to cargo refactor past what we have today without tractor beams. I would have applied that to the cargo refactor um, as part of that conversation. That is the thing you need to move to the next step. Freight elevators and uh, vehicle tractor beams. There's nothing else you could do than, uh, than For vehicles, that. things will obviously be scaled up. These beams will be systemic and take into account the mass of the object you're trying to move, be it a box, another vehicle, or even an asteroid. Due to the more sim-like nature of the feature, anything that is Maybe. interactable, given you have the combined tractor beam strength to move the mass, can be moved. This mm. was confirmed in the SRV Q&A. And yes, it includes asteroids. Oh, it isn't maybe. The SRV See? is likely the this ship is that will introduce- so great, man. He does the research and shares it for you. So if you miss something, you don't miss it when you watch one of his videos. Use the feature, being that the ship is built around the function of its tractor beam and has been progressing through the ship pipeline over the course of 2022. This development timeline seems to line up with that of tractor beams by about four months. I don't think the SRV would release without tractor beam technology, but this does point to a near future preview at the very least, and I think a 2023 release. I Key to note, to there also seem to be a couple other vehicles lined up to use this tech, likely with one of them set to come with the feature. So keep an eye and an ear out on my upcoming monthly reports. UI updates. 
Okay. Finally, UI updates. These are as evasive as the salvage feature was, but very stealthily so. For the longest time, UI was seeing no updates almost anywhere in the game. The team was working behind the scenes on a system called Building Blocks that ditched Flash and allowed for more robust designs to be made on the fly in the game engine. Mm -hmm. Since then, we've seen several new UI, but there is still plenty we need. Oh, dude, the star map update so might cool. be the most requested feature in the game at this point. We know there is a new HUD coming to ships. This here is actually the old version of that new HUD, but still a design we haven't had in game due to it being too busy. We also know there are other plans for scanning, and each manufacturer will have their own unique HUD, like the Drake designs we see here. In addition, MFDs, which are the small screens in your ship, have been teased for years now. It's also been worked on for quite some time, with 125 weeks of work starting in Q1 of 2021 and finishing up early next year. There's no knowing if it will actually be introduced, but we do see them popping up on monthly reports sometimes, so that's a good sign that they are coming up. Yeah. There's also the star map update, though I'm not sure we can expect to see that in 2023. The UI Ooh, that's a good question. So, interesting. That would be another one of my must-have 2023 features, is the star map update. You gotta, you gotta do it. It's gotta happen this, this coming year, right? You can't go another year with the current one. I think a lot of the things that he touched on here that he believes are coming in 2023 are, uh, are big maybes. And the things that I think like have to come in 2023 are, yeah, are like star map, freight elevator, server meshing, you know? UI for engineering that will come with resource management, the quantum travel UI and AR marker updates look like possibilities for 2023 as well. Yeah, It's been a be long cool. while coming, but I think we're going to start to see some more useful UI updates to ships in the coming year. These okay. are the major ship features I feel we could see introduced in the game in the next 12 months. That we've already seen. There are plenty of other features that I have no proof or evidence of a close True. release, and I imagine even one or two of these will prove me wrong. But over the coming months, if you're sticking with me, I think we may still hear about things like atmospheric flight changes, hacking, and ship AI blades. But some of those likely only in passing. There's a lot that still needs to be done for this game, but there's a more important need to get ship features finished for Squadron 42, so keep an eye out for progress on the features mentioned here, and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on when you'll get to experience them. You can also get podcasts, gameplay videos, and feature deep dives here on the channel, and as a channel member, you can get exclusive videos every month. He's one of my favorite podcasts to go on to. Um, anytime he asks, I, I say yes. It's it's just always really fun and and um yeah. Space Tomatoes a great dude. I I'm coming up on a podcast with him very soon but, actually. And if you want to win a 400i exploration ship in my birthday giveaway ending in mid December, oh, happy hit the giveaway link down below and make sure to go back and find the secret code I left in this video for an extra entry. Supporters need not look. You'll get all the codes. I saw Anyways, the Anyways, I hope you learned something in this video and I'll catch you in the next. Yeah. Great video, great video. Um, it's uh, let me link it. People were asking, but I, I wanted to wait until the end there. I didn't want to kind of disrupt the video, but there's the video there for you, and you guys can check out Space Tomatoes channel. He's a great dude. Uh, just really well put together videos and and great at informing people on what's going on. Um, so yeah, I just think that some of those features like may actually not come this year, and I think that some of the features that he thinks maybe won't will or just in my opinion, like I'd be really bummed out if they didn't is more like it with me. But anyway, thanks for watching on that one, guys. Um, yeah, Space Tomatoes great. I really don't have anything else to add uh, to it, but I think I would add just some like must have features for for 2023. But this was all ship related that we've already seen. There were some caveats there, right?